Thank you. It's good to see such a big, lively group. Well, the, uh, the season feels like it's winding down. Um, between the almost endless activity at the club and trying to keep up with Carolyn, I'm exhausted. <laughs> and there's five weeks left to go. I've spent a good deal of time this summer uh, at yacht clubs throughout New England and the Middle Atlantic states, some of the best known and most prestigious clubs in the country. And I've been making some comparisons. And I can tell you, there isn't another club I would rather be involved with than this one. What we have here is really unique. And what we have here is one of the most accomplished and unique membership groups of any of these clubs. Our club's in great shape. Now, you learn over a business career uh, to draw conclusions and make decisions from data. And I make that positive statement about our club from three pieces of data. Usage in every acti activity area, as you'll hear from Elliot, is well up. And not just because of active new members, and we have a terrific group of new members. The existing membership is more active than ever using the facilities, attending social events, and eating in the restaurants. The second data point is the new member activity, better than at any time since the beginning of the club. And third, as a result of those, the club is solid financially, as you'll hear from Roger. In keeping with the practice of trying to focus on just uh, a handful of important things and doing them well, I'll spend a few minutes talking about the five objectives that this board keeps in front of us. First is to run the club in a manner that provides the membership with an absolutely first-class premium experience. And this, this objective is more important than the other four combined. I hope you'll agree that that is being done. As Elliot goes through the activity reports, you'll see enhancements to facilities, probably the best social program ever, enhanced sports activities, and enhancements to our dining experience. You'll have the opportunity for detailed feedback on this subject in the next month's, in next month's survey, which I hope you'll take advantage of. The board pays an awful lot of attention to that survey. Uh, and speaking of paying attention to the survey, one of the items uh, uh, last year was uh, concern over the number of outside events that we have at the club. And the board has decided that uh, because we're getting so much member usage, that from the shoulder weekend in June before the 4th of July to the shoulder weekend in uh, September after Labor Day, uh, that there'll be no non-member weddings and no non-member, no large non-member uh, events other than those community events which bring reputation to the club, like some of the ones that we sponsor already, uh, the Artists Association and Nantucket Community Sailing. So that will clear the summer for our members. The second objective deals with building an active membership and reducing the resignation list. This objective I would put in the category of way above expectations in terms of accomplishment. You'll recall when Commodore Joe Ripp first started talking about the resignation list two years ago, we were approaching 65 people and it was cause for concern. In fact, the resignation list had gotten so big that um, people were starting, starting to do estate planning and determining when they should go on the resignation list. Well, um, a combination of board actions, the biggest new member class since the early years of the club, members asking to come off the resignation list because they're so happy with the club, and very few members going on the resignation list. We believe that we could be at 20 people or less by the end of this year. Now, thanks. now I'm, I'm pretty conservative when it comes to financial planning, and our treasurer, Roger, Roger Vandenberg, makes me look like a big spender. So our 
so our financial models don't assume anywhere near the repeat performance uh, and the repeat success that we've had this year. But if that happened, we could see a time in the very near future where we'll add net new members to the club or have the op option of building a, res uh, a waiting list um, if new member additions continue at anywhere near the present pace. The board's also decided that after several years at an initiation fee of $375,000, at the end of next June, we will raise that to $400,000. So if you have any friends or neighbors on the fence, get them in before next June. And the value of your membership goes up. The third objective deals with staff housing. One of the biggest public policy, policy issues in Nantucket is the fact that there isn't enough housing for summer employees of the institutions, clubs, and other organizations that uh, swell so much during the summer on Nantucket. Institutions like the New York Yacht Club and Nantucket Community Sailing are actually building dormitories. Clubs like Westmore are struggling to find housing for their employees. Since our last meeting, we've purchased two, two more staff houses um, with mortgages and believe we now control enough beds to meet our staffing needs for the foreseeable future. And we have another legitimate option for more if we need to grow the staff because of activity levels here. So we think at this point, we can take that objective off the list as accomplished. Fourth objective, continue to clean up the balance sheet. We've paid to members the contingent bond interest and the refundable assessment. And I will tell you the, the reaction from the membership um, as the comments came in to carry uh, our, our controller um, were a little surprising. Most of them were in the vein of, are you sure you owe me this money? Did you make a mistake sending me this check? But that's off the balance sheet. The only real balance sheet item left are arms, additional regular memberships that were granted to founders as an incentive to join the new club. The board continues to look at that and balance payout against the needs of the first objective I talked about. The last objective deals with the enhancing the yachting reputation of the club regionally and nationally. This is sort of a personal one for me since I joined the club to be part of a sailing community. It's become so much more, um, but that's how it all started for me. We've done pretty well locally. Our friends across the harbor have had to take notice as our sailors continue to win several Saturday One Design competitions. Our junior racers continue to get better. We've established Thursday night racing as one of the most popular sailing events on Nantucket. We have sailors competing and succeeding in national and international regattas in increasing numbers. In fact, this weekend, one of our members is uh, sailing in Sweden in the IOD uh, World Championships. And with one day to go, he was in second place. He what? He got second. He, and, okay, so he finished today, he got second. Um, and um, two of our members, um, uh, Carolyn and, uh, uh, and Peter Barrett, are sailing this weekend in the IOD North American Championships. We've established the Great Harbor Yacht Club Challenge Cup, second annual to be held next weekend. But we want to be able to host a big time national regatta where the elite of the sport can experience what our club is all about and all of our members can get involved in that kind of experience. We thought we were close next summer with the 12 meter world championships coming to Newport, but it didn't work out. We continue to work on it. Now, none of this would happen, none of these accomplishments would happen without a terrific board, engaged committees, and an accomplished professional staff. Uh, I can't tell you how much I enjoy working with this board. We are close. Um, we have really active meetings. We debate. Some would say it's argue. 
but uh, we get to the conclusion that uh, we think is right for the club, and it's an awful lot of fun. Uh, for those of you who are new members, let me take a minute and just go through our board. Uh, Elliot Kavertz is Vice Commodore. You're going to hear a lot from Elliot today. Cece Fowler is the Rear Commodore. She's also the Fleet Captain. Marcia Richards is our Secretary. Roger Vandenberg, our Treasurer. Matt Dwyer, Phil Hadley, Rhonda McDonald, Phil Nardone, Sarah Newton, and Alex uh, Neroff, uh, all at-large members of the board, uh, all really terrific people. Uh, you should feel really good about the board you've put in place. Committees. The work gets done at the committees. Um, the recommendations come up from the committees. Our committees work really hard and put in a lot of time. Roger Vandenberg in finance uh, has retooled the finance committee over the course of the last couple of years. We've got real strength on our finance committee. Facilities, Matt Twyer, been doing it for a while. Is an absolute expert. We're lucky to have him doing it. Fishing, Nathaniel Mason, relatively new, but uh, uh, more activity in fishing this year than at any year in the past. Spawn Fitness, Meg Dwyer and jo Josh Hammond, they've been instrumental in uh, proposing what we need to do in terms of a, an expansion of the spa. Food and beverage, Sarah Newton. Uh, Sarah took over at um, uh, one of the darkest times for food and beverage at Great Arbor Yacht Club. Um, and um, I, I don't have to say anything more than look at where we are right now and look at the job that that committee has done under Sarah's leadership. Sarah is stepping down. Um, she'll stay on the committee, but she's stepping down as the chair. And Rhonda McDonald will be the new chair of uh, food and beverage um, uh, starting in September. House committee, Alex Neroff. Um, uh, Alex um, uh, has uh, done this for a while. He's really good at it. Membership in marketing. Out of the park performance in membership in marketing. <laughs> out of the park performance. Uh, Phil Nardoni is uh, really taking this on, assembled a great committee. And uh, you can, again, see by the results uh, what's being accomplished there under Phil's leadership. Sailing and waterfront. Uh, Cece Fowler is the fleet captain, so she runs the sailing and waterfront, uh, waterfront committee. Now, Cece's rear commodore. Uh, she will eventually be commodore. She needs to get a lot of uh, experience in other areas of the club. So Cece is going to step down as fleet captain um, and spend a lot more time, particularly in finance. Uh, under Rogers Tutelage, uh, and um, our new fleet captain will be Tracy Weaver. <laughs> social committee, uh, just a terrific social program this year. I wasn't there, but I heard the boat bar ball this year was probably as as good or better than um, uh, than any we've had. Penny Neroff heads that uh, social committee and will do so next year. Tennis and Swim, Ewan, Ewan Copeland uh, has been leading uh, Tennis and Swim. Uh, Ewan stepped down, and uh, we now have David Cheever, who uh, uh, will take over, has taken over as chairman of Tennis and, Tennis and Swim. So we feel good about um, uh, our chairs going forward, and we feel terrific about the work that uh, these committees have been doing. Really terrific staff, professional, accomplished staff. Uh, Stephen Kreese, general manager. Carrie is our CFO. Billy Kauser takes care of the facilities, and they've never looked better since the club was open. Uh, John Lehring, tennis and swim director. Uh, absolute first-rate operation of tennis and swim, better this year than ever. Christian, uh, one of the best things Sarah ever did was get Christian to come back. Uh, Megan, the source of all knowledge uh, for uh, Great Harbor Yacht Club. Uh, Emma, doing a terrific job in, uh, in, in Waterfront. Corey, a full-time fishing director. Um, you want to know where the fish are, you call Corey. Julie Chase, our office co coordinator. Um, Andre Marrero, our executive chef. Kyle Daly, executive sous chef. Courtney Mackey, Director of Events, and Lindsay Daly, Events. And uh, again, the, uh, if you just look at the activity in our restaurants and the number of uh, private events that members are holding, you get a sense of how good these people, these people are. 
I'm going to welcome Elliot Gewurz, our Vice Commodore, and Elliot's going to go through um, in some detail what uh, the committees have accomplished and the activities uh, that uh, we should highlight to you this year. Elliot. Thank you, and uh, this is really just by way of elaboration uh, of Ron's remarks, or as he says, some further detail. All of it uh, I give you a sense of really how successful the club has been over the course of the last year. <clears throat> Let's talk first about membership. Membership. As Ron points out, you know, we have 20 new families joining this year. Our resignation list is down. Um, and uh, sorry, uh, our resignation list is seriously down. And um, you continue to be the best source of our um, new members. You're bringing them in at record numbers. I must point out that uh, our membership program, our membership referral program, will be ending uh, this December. So at the same time that our uh, dues, are, our initiation fees are going up in June, get it in now, bring in new members. The uh, membership referral program will expire at the end of this year. By any measure, uh, our membership is not inexpensive, but there is real value, and it's worth sort of, uh, I'll go back to this, it's worth sort of um, remembering that your membership or any new membership includes not only your membership, but your children are all members until they're 35, their spouses, uh, 36, um, your grandchildren have membership until they're 18. The whole family sort of joins when you have your membership. Um, and, and it's really important to sort of keep that in mind, particularly when you talk about um, uh, new members. If, in terms of estate planning, rather than going on the uh, resignation list, I'd like people to remember that we do have a senior membership program. And the senior membership program allows you to transfer if you're over 70 years of age. Uh, you can transfer your membership to one of your children, and both you and your child can continue to enjoy membership privileges at the club. Uh, it's really important, that, I mean, that you consider that, and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have about that. Phil, and uh, marketing uh, and communications. Uh, we've completely done over the website this year and integrated it with our accounting system, allowing you to go online and see your statements, pay your bills, and all the rest. Uh, our emails this summer, as you may have noticed, are fewer but more inclusive. So hats off to the marketing committee for a job well done on that. Food and beverage. Uh, what can we say? But thanks, Sarah. <laughs> uh, and thanks, Christian and Andre and the entire staff. Um, it's never been better. Uh, we have a full breakfast and in the grill each morning. And if you haven't gone, I really encourage you to do it. It's really great. Um, um, our bistro menu, looking forward, uh, our bistro menu will be continued in the grill room up until Columbus Day. And you've noticed, I'm sure, over the course of the summer that with these new retractable screens we have, we can sit more people on the deck more often, uh, which it's, it's been a real plus. Uh, as Ron mentioned, our events, private events, have never been busier. Uh, we have parties, private parties, birthdays, dinners, meetings, and all the rest. In every category, it's up. And for those of you that like some numbers, here's a bunch of numbers. Uh, we have 17% increase year over year with covers. That's about 11,000 lunch and dinner covers. Our busiest uh, Friday night, Friday night's a really popular night. Friday night on August 10th, we had 225 covers in the grill room and 125 covers in the dining room. All the while, lots of beer and pizza being sold. <laughs> Over 3,000 beers, it's a lot, 600 pizzas, and there's always shots at the bar, 2,500 vodka pours. I don't know where we get these numbers. So, um, and 1,000 breakfasts. So a lot of good eating and drinking, for which we thank you. 
social committee. You could get exhausted just by going through the event calendar. 30 events over the course of the summer and more yet to come. So Ron, rest up. There's a clam bake, scalloping, and stroll yet to come. We've had record attendance at our uh, ladies uh, in a number of different areas, particularly with the book group and our welcoming dinner and independence. I don't know how many hundreds we had, 700, 800, Stephen? 800 people for Independence Day. Uh, total sellout. Uh, fan favorites, cooking demonstration, flower luncheons, sing-along, bocce tours, oyster tours, bocce tournaments, ladies' martini night, bingos for grown-ups. It goes on and on. Uh, one success after another. And the boat bond, I guess everyone would agree, was completely over the top and completely wonderful this year. So, you know, hats off to our social committee. Sports barn, more numbers, up overall revenue, up over 11% uh, year over year from 2017. Uh, new cardio equipment, I've used it, I hope you have as well. And for those of you who aren't aware, we are expanding the sports barn. Uh, we're going to have more classroom space, and upstairs we'll have some additional shower and bathroom facilities. And uh, the permits were obtained last month or so, Stephen? First, or, uh, we'll get there. But we're on track and we expect the project to be completed in 2000 by the opening of 2019. Tennis and swim, again, hugely active. Over 15 adult clinics and round robins office offered each week. Our kids program is ranked probably the highest on the island. 24 scheduled events, you can see them. Uh, including doubles, mixed doubles with Sankety, uh, most successful pro-am tour to date. We had a new breakfast at Wimbledon this year, which will probably be hopefully re repeated. Uh, successful inter-club matches with Nantucket Yacht Club, Westmore, and the Casino. And new this year and really popular is pickleball. Monday afternoons come out. It's a great social, you know, great opportunity to get to see some friends. Not too strenuous. Come out, you'll enjoy it for sure. Fishing, Corey. Uh, fishing has been great this summer, right? Uh, uh, the scup fishing on Wednesday night with the kids, everyone really, really enjoys that. We've had a new clamming event. We had two f uh, fish feasts this year, which were hugely successful. Some lectures, oyster tours, and the best of all, it's not over yet. Uh, it's not over yet. Corey is on island all four, all four. So lots of excursions and opportunities for what? Tuna fishing this time of year in October? Tuna fishing. As you can see, it's been really busy and really successful. And you guys made it all happen. So thanks. Cece. <laughs> It has been my pleasure to serve as fleet captain and be in charge of uh, working with Emma and the superlative team that we have in the sailing and waterfront. Um, for those of you who don't know, waterfront is, is in some ways separate from our sailing programs in that we look after the docks and what goes on on the docks, and um, uh, that um, has um, not been without its challenges. We had some um, issues last year um, that, let's see if I'm gonna do this right, nope. Did just what you did, Elliot. Um, okay, we didn't, okay. I, I thought we did waterfront first. Okay, all right, here. <laughs> I thought we were on waterfront, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, junior program. Our junior program just did an outstanding job this year, and that is in part due to our extraordinary staff who were just great with the, with the young sailors and, and the little biddies as well. Um, 
people came in record numbers. Um, junior Sailing saw 200 visits. The 420 program was a highlight with strong participation in both 420 Green and 420 Blue Race. And we haven't had real racers in this area before, and they did well. You'll see in, in shortly. Um, uh, our Opti Sailors are racing off island and sailing fast. More racers to be added in 2019, and we'll be um, adding some boats to that fleet um, because we're making a presence. As Ron indicated, one of our objectives was to become a real sailing racing club, and it is happening. Um, and then the Jobson Cup, Gary was here uh, regaling the kids with stories about racing on the high seas, and um, we had 11 Opties and 11 420 sailing, and and it was a great day on the water. The adult program. Um, we had cruises to Co2, Martha's Vineyard, and Chatham, which was the great surprise hit of the summer. Everyone loved Chatham. And Emma did an outstanding job in making sure that every detail was attended to in that trip. Um, there was also a sail to Toppers. I don't know that they actually sailed, um, but, but, but it was a great time. Um, uh, launch usage was strong. We have more people that are active on the waterfront than ever before. Um, 800 rides given throughout the summer. Dock slips um, are full. And there um, is more competition than ever. And I know we'd all love to have a slip. Um, the lottery will happen the end of, well, the sign up for the lottery will happen the end of October. The lottery will happen about a month later in the beginning of December. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Information will go out on that. Um, adult racing on Saturday in the One Design series has been. Um, strong. We are in the Illyrian, the Rhodes 19, and the Hairshoff 12 and a half fleet. And our thanks to Elliot Gewertz for starting the Hairshoff 12 and a half fleet, um, which has attracted both sailors from our club and from Nantucket Yacht Club. It's been a whole lot of fun, and we've Great Harbor has done very well. Um, well. There's been a big uptick in private lessons, as Ron said. Thursday night racing is just really one of the most popular events on the whole island. And if you come to Thursday night cocktails, I know we're all conditioned to come to Friday night, but if you show up a night early, you'll be dazzled by all the sailors here coming in, having a good time. And it's really brought not only Nantucket Yacht Club and Great Harbor closer together, but we get Nantucket community sailing people out there as well. And so it's been a, a real coming together of the sailing institutions on the island. Um, next or in two weeks, um, next, next week, uh, the second annual GHYC Challenge, September 8th and 9th, we'll have six people racing in IODs and in Rhodes 19 on that Saturday and Sunday. Um, Nantucket Race Week. Okay, I could go through all of this, but our meeting needs to be finite and not infinite. Um, but there are a couple of things that I'd like to to highlight, um, particularly um, um, Peter Barrett, Nantucket Race Week, best performer in a one design class. I think that's, that's a pretty awesome thing. Um, and then our youth. Um, our youth have been slow to catch up to where Nantucket is because Nantucket Yacht Club has had a program that's gone on for 100 years. But our kids are really um, making a statement here with Ogden Obertine getting third in Opti Green um, and in 420 uh, Green Fleet, first place to Hyler Tamman and Chris DeSibio, third place to Lily Schnook and Jack Lawson. I think that's awesome. Um, our young sailors are really on the move and it's thrilling. It's just where we wanted to be. Um, the women's regatta, as you can see, it was wonderful. I'm going to move on a little bit faster. And I'd like to go down and just, uh, we'll hear more about some of this in a little bit, but I'd like to go down particularly to Opera House Cup. Sabine and Richard Griffin won the Opera House Cup this year, which is a huge accomplishment. It was a great day on the water for Great Harbor Yacht Club, is all I can say. Um, waterfront, 
We don't have a slide for water? Oh, it was shortened. Okay, I'm not going to talk about waterfront, but I am going to talk about two things that aren't slides. <laughs> okay, St. Bart's. You may have seen the email. If you have never been on a Great Harbor trip, this is one you really want to go on. Um, Emma has done some legwork on this, and it is going to be a blast. We haven't nailed down the dates, but kind of put in the back of your mind and pencil in on your calendar the first two weeks in February to go to St. Bart's for an out-of-this-world experience with your fellow Great Harbor members. I think it's going to be a blast. Finally, I'd just like to... Um, thank Emma Hermanic. Um, her leadership on sailing and waterfront has been extraordinary. She is talented, organized, fearless, tough, admired, respected, and beloved. And she has communicated that to her staff. Um, they have made us all better sailors. They have brought joy, enthusiasm, and a passion for being on the water. We thank you all for another tremendous summer. And now, Roger Vandenberg. So, in my report, I'm going to introduce you to a few people that work on the Finance Committee, and then I'm going to give you a financial overview of 2018. So here's a uh, poster that appeared. <laughs> at the Boat Barn Ball. And I just wanted to let everybody know that in addition to thinking about how I can embezzle money from the club, I do wake up in the morning and occasionally think about how we can make the club more efficient and focused. But I have a few people that help me in that endeavor. So here's our audit committee. <laughs> this, this group of people who worked with the club and helped us get a clean audit with no comments for management improvements, and we thank them very much. And here's our tax advisor. <laughs> Even though we file an, uh, we're a nonprofit, we file a tax return each year. It's called a Form 990. Uh, and this advisor has helped us to do it in a smooth and easy manner once again this year. And of course, we can't forget our investment committee. <laughs> two, two years ago, we started investing the, the club's idle, cla idle cash. And given the interest rate increase over the past couple of years, I'm happy to report that we're earning about 2% investment in our idle cash, and we're investing it all in short-term treasury securities, so we're taking really no risk for the club regarding principal. So we'd like to thank these auxiliary members of the finance cover. Financial goals. Someone told me early in my business career, good managements meet or beat their operating plans, and that's what we try to do here at the club. So every year we go through a detailed budgeting plan. We have the activity heads project their business in revenues and expenses each year. Then we superimpose on that uh, the expenses of the overall club. We look at labor costs, we look at insurance, we look at medical costs. Then we build up our overall revenues minus expenses, and then we look at dues. And then we determine what's the amount of dues that is needed to have the club break even on a cash basis. We run the club on a cash basis. And then we look at the numbers of memberships, divide those two, and then we get into here's what the dues needs to be on that basis to break even on a cash basis. But then if we don't like the number, we go back and do a few more iterations to see where can we cut costs, or we look carefully at the incremental improvements that we're making each year to the club. So we go through an integrated process, come up with a detailed budget, and then we work against that budget. So how did we do? In 2017, we beat our budget. We had an operating surplus of about 150,000. In 2018, we're projecting to have an operating surplus of about 50,000. Uh, but in addition, we've added valet parking. We've added ex extended breakfast season. Uh, we've added, uh, we, we bought a house. We had an opportunity to buy a house for employee housing that we originally budgeted for 2019 and we decided to buy it this year, and we've covered the financing costs in our operating budget as well. Uh, so we think we're having a, a marvelous season this year, and we expect to uh, at least achieve our budget and maybe beat it by a little bit. So the way we finance the club is we finance the annual operations out of dues. 
and then we finance our long-term capital investments out of net member proceeds. That's the percentage of the membership initiation fee that's retained by the club each year. And, and so that's where we finance it. In some years, we will exceed the amount that we need to spend for capital expenditures. And if it is a shortfall in any one year, then we'll cover it out of our cash balances. But rest assured, we're gonna maintain this asset base in a first class experience. So you see in this year, we, we uh, netted, we expect to net a million four from our net member proceeds. That includes one treasury membership for 375, soon to be 400,000 that we sell the first membership of each year. So if you add that one treasury membership to the net member proceeds, that's where you get the million four. In 2018, we spent about 850,000. There was no real big item, but we did upgrade the Tucker Nuck. We bought some HVAC equipment, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning equipment. We added uh, equipment into the kitchen, and we bought a Rhodes 19 fleet. Once again, that's our commitment to maintain a first-class experience. As I said earlier, we purchased one house. It was an opportunistic buy. We think we have all of the housing that we need going forward. Uh, given our staffing levels. In the peak season, we have 150 employees and we house about 90 of them. Uh, the rest of the people either have housing on island or make other arrangements. So we're very pleased that we've accomplished that goal. We spent $2.4 million, uh, I'm sorry, we, we spent three and a half million dollars and we financed 2.4 million of it. And of the amount that we financed, we put up 30% of the purchase price, we financed 70%, and we got long-term, we got mortgages at four and a quarter fixed rate of interest. So we're pleased with our capital structure. And as Ron mentioned, we cleaned up our balance sheet. We paid 3.1 million of obligations from the 2009 restructuring. Some balance sheet items. So what's left on the balance sheet? We have 4.9 million of cash and we have 6.9 million of bank debt. And the bank debt includes our term debt and the mortgage debt that I mentioned before. Uh, so we feel pretty comfortable. We also have a receivable of 2.3 million that's really left over from the 2010 restructuring, and that's a receivable that the members owe the club and they're currently paying interest on at the same rate that we're paying on our term loan. Uh, so we feel pretty comfortable with the levels of debt that we have, uh, especially considering that it's being subsidized by the net member receivable. We have a lot of assets here. We have this club facility, we have the uh, sports barn, we have the tennis facility. We now own six houses. So we just point out that it's a big asset base. It requires careful attention. We think the management team does a great job, but it does require capital. So we also have 12 memberships in uh, Treasury. You'll recall that we repurchased some low value memberships last year for a relatively small amount, and they totaled 13. We sold one treasury membership at the beginning of this year, so we have this asset on our balance sheet. We expect to sell one treasury membership every year to enhance our net member proceeds and help us fund our long-term capital expenditures. Long-term capital plan, as part of our budget process every year, we project out our long-term capital for four incremental years. So we're looking at five years, one in a fair amount of detail, the other in less detail, but give us some visibility on the things that we have going forward. We only know that we have two reasonably good size numbers going forward. We have the sports barn that we're gonna expand. Ron has already mentioned that, we're excited about that. That project's well down in the planning and development and permitting process. And then we know we're gonna to have to uh, refurbish the docks, the fixed docks sometime going forward. We're not certain when it is, we're not quite certain the aggregate amount of the number, but the H piles or the steel beams that are pounded into the mud are corroding. And at some point we're gonna to have to resurface those steel beams and they're pretty expensive because we're gonna to have to sandblast them. We're gonna to have to tent around the sandblast to cover the effluent or catch the effluent. So we have that as a placeholder in our budget. So as I said before, the focus is to maintain a first class club and we, um, we hope you believe that the, the I believe the, the club is well managed, financially strong, and we're good stewards of your membership equity capital. Thank you. Okay, so I have to convene an official uh, business meeting to um, do the vote. Um, and I'm going to 
read this because I haven't committed it to memory. Will the annual meeting of Great Harbor Yacht Club members please come to order? In accordance with our bylaws, there's a quorum uh, present, either in person or by proxy, to conduct the business of the meeting. And Megan, you've confirmed that there is a quorum. Um, I will ask for a motion um, to waive the reading of the 2017 annual minutes and vote their approval. Is there a motion? Second. All in favor? Thank, and, and opposed? The vote was unanimous. Um, is there anyone present who wishes to vote who has not filled out a proxy vote? Seeing none, um, will you please refer to the proposed slate of officers and directors, which was distributed on July 30th, 2018, via email and by posting in the clubhouse? I'll now read the proposed slate. Re-elect Roger Vandenberg as treasurer to serve as a second term of one year. Re-elect Philip Nardoni Jr. as a member of the Board of Directors to serve a second three-year term. Re-elect Sarah Newton as a member of the Board of Directors to serve a second three-year term. You see uh, on the board, um, the, uh, the slate of officers and directors in total. Can I have a motion to elect the um, three board members for re-election and the officer slate? Second. I'll now call for a vote on the slate and we'll be voting the proxies in favor of the slate. The slate has been elected by, uh, uh, by a majority vote. We have enough proxies that uh, provide a majority vote. If you'll now refer, please refer to the bylaw proposed change that was also distributed to all members on July 30th. Um, I'll present the bylaw change. In fact, I'm not going to read uh, the bylaw, and I'll try to, try to summarize it. Uh, and this deals with, deals with treatment of the resignation list. Any member um, who puts their name on the resignation list after August 31st, 2018, shall have 90 days from that date of resignation to withdraw their name without paying the $50,000 administration fee. So you put your name on the list, you got 90 days to withdraw it, uh, and there's no $50,000 fee. In addition, anybody whose uh, name is on the resignation list um, before um, August 30th, 2018, uh, actually from November 3rd, 2010, has until November 30th, 2018 to remove their name from the resignation list without paying a $50,000 penalty. That is the sum and substance of the bylaw change that we're asking you to improve. Is there any discussion on that? Can I have a motion to approve the bylaw? Is there a second? And um, all in favor? Any opposed? When we add in the proxies, we um, uh, have enough votes to pass uh, to, to pass the uh, the bylaw change, and the motion carries. As there is no further business to come before the meeting, we are adjourned. The business part of the meeting is adjourned. Uh, we have one more uh, one more presentation and discussion item, and then then I'll take any any questions on any of the subjects. And I'm going to ask Elliot to come back up and talk about the establishment of a 501c3 Great Harbor Yacht Club Foundation. And uh, I can tell you that um, Elliot has put an awful lot of work into establishing uh, this foundation. Uh, he had a small committee made up of uh, Cece Fowler and Sarah Newton. Uh, and um, Elliot has really taken the bull by the horns, got this thing going, and this could be uh, a pretty exciting activity for Great Harbor going forward. So, Elliot.
Uh, first, uh, thank you, Ron, for your kind remarks, but this could not have gotten where we've gotten without CC and Sarah and the entire board, and now I really hope the whole support of the membership. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to uh, the Great Harbor Yacht Club Foundation, and that's our logo. And the core proposition, and as we'll see, the vitality of the harbor is central to the vitality of this club. Friday nights, we gather for drinks by the harbor. We eat oysters from the head of the harbor. We overlook the harbor as we dine from our decks. We race our boats in the harbor. Isn't that a nice spinnaker? <laughs> our kids fish in the harbor. In the fall, we scallop in the harbor. Without doubt, we are the direct beneficiaries of a clean and vibrant harbor. But the health of the harbor and its marine ecosystem cannot be taken for granted. The total maximum daily load, a measure of nitrogen per liter of water, meets regular regulatory requirements in only parts of the harbor. And those of you who attended the recent State of the Harbor presentation of the club know that eelgrass, another measure of health of the harbor, has undergone significant loss in both the Monomoy and Fuller Mill Marsh areas in the last several years. And I'd like credit where credit is due. Jeff Carlson, please stand. Jeff is the head of the Department of Natural Resources of the town of Nantucket. This is his chart. And according to a conversation I had with Jeff, the scallop of the uh, eelgrass is down 30% in Monomoy over a five-year period. We had healthy eelgrass in the Fulling Mill Marsh five years ago. It's now essentially bare. At the outset, and as a condition to the establishment of this club, the club entered into a settlement agreement under which it was legally obligated to contribute a minimum of $35,000 a year for 10 years for harbor-related projects. Funded projects included an eelgrass study and some water quality tri equipment treatment uh, plants for the town. We had a representative on the board which determined how the money was spent, but our voice was only one of many. We've made our, we will be making our ninth payment under this agreement this year, and our final payment will be made next year. But it's suggested indeed, I believe, that we can and should do more as our legal obligations under the settlement agreement come to an end. Amongst our peers, and I am not proud of this, amongst our peers, we stand alone in not having a foundation of our own. The Nantucket Yacht Club has a charitable foundation under which educational grants are made to local students. The Nantucket Golf Club has a highly successful golf event each year, raising substantial sums for college scholarship, the Nantucket Kids. Both clubs recognize the need to give back to the community and their foundations generate enormous goodwill island-wide. We regularly interact and are indeed regulated by the town, and it's important that we are seen to be and be, in fact, good corporate citizens contributing to the health and vitality of the Nantucket community. What better way for the Great Harbor Yacht Club to do this than to establish a charitable foundation dedicated primarily to the health of the harbor and its marine ecosystem? The harbor has been central to the health and indeed the very fabric of the Nantucket community from the day it was founded and continues to be so today. What more appropriate cause for GHCY to support? With that in mind, your board earlier this summer approved the establishment of the Great Harbor 
Yacht Club Foundation, dedicated, as I said, to the health of the harbor and its marine ecosystem. The 501C charity is expected to work primarily, but not exclusively, with the town of Nantucket's Department of Natural Resources to help fund projects which would otherwise go unfunded. And as I say, we have with us today the, the honor to have the head of the department with us, who's helped enormously in our consideration of the foundation. Thank you very much, Jeff. <laughs> Sample projects the foundation might fund include expansion and building of oyster beds, which help clean the harbor and mitigate storm surges. The promulgation of eelgrass beds, which uh, the local scallop, which are so essential for the scalloping industry. Additionally, we might support the town's shellfish propagation station on Brand Point. Dredging is another area of possible funding. Beyond your donations, your support might also include rolling up your sleeves and volunteering at the Brand Point promulgation, propagation station where volunteer help is needed every summer. In turn, the station will welcome our summer campers to the station for programs. The list of possible projects is extensive and far exceeds existing funding sources. And working with the town is only a place to start. The foundation has now been established, and earlier this week, we had our initial board meeting to elect directors. The board will have seven members, the Commodore, the Vice Commodore, Treasurer, and immediately past Commodore of the club. And in addition, there will be three at-large members. The members, the at-large members elected this week are Jack Manning, Jeff Parker, and Anne-Marie Bratton. If there's anyone there, we thank you if you're here. Importantly, the foundation will also have a scientific advisory board to help select projects for funding and even make suggestions for projects promoting the health of the harbor. We seek to have a truly first-class advisory board as befitting the stature of the club. And this is where you, our membership, comes in. By any fair measure, the membership of this club is exceptional. We count amongst our members distinguished scientists, inventors, CEOs, entrepreneurs, philanthropists, financiers, professionals, and more. As a group, we are people who aspire to make a difference and have in fact made a difference in our chosen fields of endeavor. The foundation will be funded by voluntary contributions from our members and the general public. But we ask for more than your financial support, as essential as that is. We will ask for your involvement and for your contribution of your considerable talents. We ask that you join your fellow GHCY members in helping the club to make a meaningful and measurable difference. It is only right and proper that we do so. We will be in touch, but you need not wait for us to contact you. You can let us know at any time of your interest in the GHCY Foundation, starting now. And uh, just by way of footnote, we will have an innovative uh, gala next year, not your father's gala, not your mommy's gala. It's going to be really different, a lot of fun, centered on the harbor, time and date to be determined. But I really do ask your support for this really important cause. We can, if we work together, make a difference. Thanks. Okay, great, Elliot, thank you. Okay, we're now open for questions. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, well, the answer to that's yes. Um, uh, again, 
they, they go through a membership process. Uh, the question was, can uh, children receive the membership through a will? Uh, and, and basically the answer to that is yes. The, the senior membership is a little different in that um, you can actually transfer the membership to a child uh, when you achieve age 70, and you can keep using the club as a full member without voting privileges as long as you pay dues. Your child uh, will be a full member also paying dues. Um, so um, we've already had um, one person this year take advantage of the senior membership. Other questions? Yes. Question is, how many members do we now have? We have 379 active members. We, the bylaws um, cap us at 450? Uh, 440? What is it? 455. 465. I, I will tell you that um, we, we kind of talk about that a lot at the board. And the question is, at 465, um, do we start to overwhelm the resources of the club? Um, and we won't let that happen. We are a ways away from that. Um, and uh, uh, while the club looks very, very busy right now, there, we think there's some things we can do to um, make that a lot better. It would really help if uh, the membership really paid attention to restaurant reservations um, so that we can plan, uh, plan the, uh, uh, the restaurant staff um, on, a, on a more efficient basis than we're able to do today. Uh, but um, at 465, uh, we'd have to think about the facilities and think about the resources we have, I think, pretty hard before we got to that number. Yeah. Yes, anybody else? Okay, terrific. I hope you'll stay around. Uh, uh, we are going to have um, uh, club awards, uh, which will take a little, t little time, and then uh, we'll all get out to the field bar. So, yeah. thank you. Okay, Carrie? Okay, I'm all messed up here. <laughs> I need the uh, I need the list. It's right here. Oh, got is that it? Okay, we, um, uh, <laughs> how are you doing? This is, um, uh, this is a fun part of, uh, fun part of this meeting. Um, uh, it's the annual awards uh, for the, primarily the sporting activities of the Great Arbor Yacht Club. We're going to start with, um, uh, with tennis. And I uh, welcome John James, our head professional. Thank you, Commodore. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I first want to start by thanking the membership through John Lerink, our director, myself and all the pros, Rebecca and her staff. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to come here every summer, to come to this beautiful island, and to work for a beautiful club, a great Harbor Yacht Club. So thank you. Um, 
Uh, when I arrived in May, um, I noticed there were numerous improvements made to our housing in the off season. And I just wanted to let you guys know that it does not go unnoticed or unappreciated. We appreciate it very much. So thank you so much. Okay, I am here to award the Distinguished Achievement Award for Junior and Adult Tennis. This award is given to the adult and junior tennis player that has contributed to GHYC Tennis through their participation and achievements on the tennis court, as well as their com combination of integrity, sportsmanship, and enthusiasm for the game of tennis. Now, our junior award winner this year is kind of a throwback to the past. When we were young, we looked forward to summer to get outside. We would be outside from dusk till dawn. Um, this athlete has embraced this as well. This athlete sometimes would do four sports in a day. Sometimes tennis would be the fourth of the day. But every time this athlete got to me, they were enthusiastic, they were ready to work, and they had a lot of fun. So before the days of Fortnite, computers, Netflix, it was really what summer was about for us. Summer was about being outside and being active. And this athlete truly embraced that. So I'm very proud to award the Junior Distinguished Achievement Award for 2018 to Leah Nathan. Now, our adult program this summer was the busiest it had ever been. We had numerous, numerous great candidates for this award. Uh, the athlete that we chose was a little more soft-spoken. They worked extremely hard on understanding the technique and strategies of the game, and their hard work was not unnoticed. So I'm very proud to present the Adult Distinguished Achievement Award for 2018 Tennis to Deborah Halber. Thank you, John. I can tell you that John must really be something special because my wife, instead of having coffee with me and looking at the ocean out in a wall wind, it is gone at 7.30 to go take tennis lessons with him. So. <laughs> Next, Corey Gerham, Gamble, fishing. Thank you very much. Um, two comments before I give out the awards. Um, and the first is, in the last bunch of years, one of the things I've always said is uh, how wonderful it is to spend time with you all. And there's no question that the secret sauce of the club is how everybody treats each other here. Um, I also want to say I had a special, we had one slight uh, issue we had to deal with, which is not worth talking about. But I had got in touch with Stephen and Carrie, and in a matter of minutes, they helped me resolve this issue. So not only has my experience here been made wonderful by the members, but the people we work with is, is pretty special. Um, so that's just a quick little, little plug I want to put in there. Um, in terms of the fishing, it's sort of been a summer of have and have nots. Um, I have people come up to me, tell me it's the best summer they've ever had, and that's true for a lot of people. There's been a lot of great bass fishing, and it's the summer of a lot of people going, I can't find the fish. And that's true, too. Great Point has had the worst summer uh, in history. Uh, some of my friends who are charter boat captains down here in Strait Wharf, they've had the worst summer that they can imagine just in terms of finding fish. So it's a summer of have and have nots. And what really makes the haves have it is the patience that they put in. And it's not just showing up and a fish gets on the end of your line, but are you willing to put in the time? We struggled from the beach, beach fishing. We've gone to Great Point a bunch, um, gone to Low Beach. Just there haven't been as many fish near shore because there haven't been as many bluefish. So those who've had success deserve a pat on their back because they've put the time and they put the energy in. And that's going to lead us to uh, the first award I want to give out, which is the Junior Fishing Award. 
And this award is given to a youth in the club who deserves to be recognized for their contributions to the GHYC fishing program and their participation in the fishing events. Events include um, lectures, events include scup fishing, include beach fishing. Uh, and this year's participant was not only patient, was a great student, but had fun in every activity she took on. Ava Oberting. Before I give out the, the winner of the family fishing tournament, it's also important to note the participation. Um, there's a solid crew of, of fishermen who I've gotten to know over my 10 plus years here who always fish, always go out, always give me as much information as I give to them. Um, what's been fantastic this year is a new crop of fishermen have come along, and a lot of it's come from our youth driving it. And the, the scup fishing on Wednesday night, as simple as it sounds, those, wanna, those are the ones who want to go beach fishing. Those are the ones who want to get out of the water and get out on boats. And so we've got a huge surge in people who want to go out and go fishing, go clamming, and that's, that, that was wonderful this year. So it's been a lot of participation, uh, increased new families, new faces, which has been wonderful. Um, many of you have been in this meeting before know there's a couple families who tend to dominate the family fishing tournament. And uh, we won't say any names. But nice to, it, 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 it was over uh, 10 families participated in the tournament this year and a lot of new faces. And not surprisingly, the winner of the family fishing tournament was also our junior angler. It was the Oberting family. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I don't think there's a family in this club who uses the club more than the Overtings. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Next, sailing. Emma. Hi, everyone. Thank you for sticking around for the awards. It's really nice to award all the people that participate in all the activities all summer. And without you guys, we wouldn't be here to award these. So thank you very much for participating in sailing for my department, as well as tennis and fishing and, and everything else. I'd also just like to say thank you very much to Cece for the kind words earlier. And thank you very much for working with me these past couple of years. It's made it such a joy to be here at Great Harbor with all of you guys and with the rest of the leadership department. So thank you. And Tracy, I look forward to the years to come. <coughs> So first, we're going to do the Adult Crew Award. And this sailor has been a staple in the GHYC sailing and racing community for years now. But she's really expanded her horizons uh, as of late. She participated in Charleston Race Week as a jib trimmer and four deck queen, helping the team to sail fast and successfully. She was commended for remaining calm, uh, despite some hairy mark roundings and crowded starts. Over the summer, she's had a renewed focus in Rhodes 19 racing with her skipper, and they spent a lot of time making sure the boat was up to snuff and, and ready to race. She spends Sundays racing IODs, also as four-deck and jib trimmer, and she's also found a great crew position aboard Sunny, one of the classic yachts owned by uh, Dr. Craig Venter. She's raced with them throughout New England and uh, has really enjoyed that as well. So I'd like to award this to Manu Palangin, She's truly an example to all of us of becoming more involved. Yeah, sorry. More involved in racing throughout Nantucket and shows us that the season doesn't have to just be limited to the summer here on Nantucket. So she's not here, but uh, we'll make sure that she gets this. Now for the crew award for the juniors. This young sailor's been participating in sailing for a number of years since before I started here, 
but she's truly grown into a great young sailor. She sailed Opties for many years, even doing a bit of racing there. And this year, after transitioning into the 420 program, she's really come into her own. She started in 420 green at the beginning of the summer, but quickly ended up in 420 blue and race. And she gained a, a newfound confidence skippering the boat with her crew like an absolute champion. She uh, wanted to continue sailing as much as possible. So she came for the morning and the afternoon programs and really acted as a teacher and a leader to some of the new kids in the morning, showing them the ropes of the 420. She put her skills to work in the Nantucket Youth Regatta and placed third in the 420 Green Fleet. She'll surely be an institution in our 420 race team next year, and we can't wait to see her grow and progress even further. So we'd like to give this one to Lily Schnook. Uh, Lily is back to school already doing homework, so uh, we'll mail this one to her. Your turn, Susie. Well, with, with all our great sailors, this was a really hard one to come up with. Um, this is the S Distinguished Achievement Award for an adult. Um, the Distinguished Achievement Award is given annually to a member or members who have been extraordinary ambassadors for the club representing Great Harbor on and off the water. As our fleet has grown over the past 15 years, GHY sailor, sailors have been recognized not only in Nantucket Harbor, but up and down the East Coast, and most recently in Europe this afternoon with Richard Werdiger placing second in the IOD Worlds. This year, for the first time, we are pleased to give the award to a couple who have, been demonst who have demonstrated extraordinary commitment to racing across a number of fleets, they have supported the sailing community for years and encouraged racing at ever more competitive levels. 2018 began with GHYC racers heading to Charleston Race Week in the Flying Tiger fleet. They swept the podium with Carolyn Grant, founding Waterfront Director, winning the regatta. She and Ron then turned their sights to their beautiful Blackfish, the Jim Taylor Spirit of Tradition sloop they built in 2017. In Newport, they were second in New York Yacht Club's annual regatta. Then it was off to Edgartown Race Week, where they were first winning every race, including the 58-mile round Martha's Vineyard race. Heading up to Maine, they took first in the Castine to Camden race, second in Camden to Brooklyn Leg, and first in Egamagan Reach, world's, the world's largest wooden boat race with 127 boats this year. From Maine, it was back to Massachusetts with a first at Marblehead Corinthian and a first in Nantucket Race Week, third in Opera House Cup, and then back to Rhode Island for the Hairshaw Regatta and Newport Classics, in both of which they took second. When on island, they could be seen on the podium in the Illyrian and Hairshaw Fleece on Thursday here at GHYC and in the One Design Regatta at Nantucket Yacht Club on Saturday. Next year, we are looking forward to hearing more good news from Team Blackfish when they campaigner in the Caribbean in the spring and the Mediterranean in summer and fall. It is my great pleasure to award the Distinguished Achievement Award to Carolyn Grant Zarella and Commodore Ron Zarella. More. Oh, I actually have three more, uh, but then it's time for the fuel bar. We're almost there. So next up, distinguished achievement for a junior. Um, this sailor is a member of the All Island Opti race team and sails fast and continues to improve every day on the water. He sailed in four off island regattas, consistently sailing fast and is often one of the fastest on the team. Not only does he sail well, but he also knows how to stay focused and have fun. He's a great team member, always egging on his, his fellow sailors to sail fast, but also work hard and put everything away at the end of the day. 
Every time they return from a regatta, their coach Ben is always commending this young sailor on his positive attitude, willingness to help, and generally excellent demeanor. He placed third in the All Island Opti Racing on Thursday afternoons by just a tiny little half a point. And uh, what is it? First, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Um, and uh, in the top third in the off island regattas in fleets of over 100 boats, which is a, a really serious accomplishment. Can you imagine sailing with 100 different opties on one line? It's got to be nuts. So uh, I'd like to award this to Natty Mason. Alrighty. Next up is the Commodore's Award, which is given annually by the Commodore, or us, sort of, uh, <laughs> to the adult and junior sailor that have contributed to Great Harbor Yacht Club sailing through their achievements in racing or their combination of integrity, enthusiasm, generosity, and competence in sailing. So we also have uh, an adult and junior for this one. So for the adult, we're presenting this year's Commodore's Award to a couple who have really taken their sailing to another level. And it's really shown out on the water this summer. They spend their winter traveling to various sailing clinics in uh, Florida, the Southeast, and the Caribbean, and working on their boat handling skills down there. They're never shy to try a new boat or sail with new people, and I really think that's given them an edge out on the water here in Nantucket. During the summer, they sail their Alarian for any and every race, including the normal Thursdays, Saturday racing, and the various distance events that the Alarian fleet holds throughout the summer. They took first overall for the August 1 design series, which included a number of well-sailed first place wins. And as you heard earlier, they sailed in the Opera House Cup and won. And it was not at all a pleasant day for any of you that were here that Sunday. It was wet and it was wild, but they stuck with it and they won. They've embraced sailing as part of their lives and really take advantage of the yacht club part of Great Harbor. So congratulations to Sabine and Richard G Griffin. Alrighty, and then another lovely junior who is also a great racer and contributes to Great Harbor Yacht Club sailing. Um, we're very fortunate at Great Harbor to have a ton of really amazing youth sailors, and they're all so positive and happy and cheery. We're really happy to have them around, and it really makes our summer kind of like Cece was saying. We all can't wait to come in every day and see the young ones and see how excited they are and, and ready to go sailing. Um, it's hard to pick just one individual to receive the Commodore's Award. But this young lady really shines among the youth sailors we see on a daily basis. Her positive, bright attitude makes her a joy to be around. She's always keen to help her fellow sailors rig and derig, and never gives the coaches any grief. Not only is she a great kid, but she's a great sailor too. She practices hard, stays focused, and uses that to her advantage at regattas, where she finishes consistently in the top half of the fleet, again among those hundred other opties on the line. Congrats to Kay Lyon for receiving this year's Commodore's Award. You're such... You're such a lovely young sailor to be around, and your smile is infectious to your teammates, coaches, and friends. Keep up the good work.
And I think we're done. Thanks for being here.